Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. Today we have another Photon lesson for you. We've already done one lesson talking about how to spawn the player's avatars into the scene, but that lesson was very basic and it only talked about how to randomly spawn the avatars into the scene, which is good for like a free-for-all game. And so what we're going to do for this video is take it from the perspective of a team-based multiplayer game. And so we're going to have the different spawn points for each team, and then players are going to be assigned to a team when they enter the game, and their avatar is going to then be instantiated on their team spawn point. So let's get started. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. Now just a reminder, this lesson is building off of everything that we've done in our other Photon playlist. So if you haven't completed that playlist, then I highly recommend that you start that playlist from the beginning and work through it, and then come back and watch this video. Now everything that we're going to be coding in this tutorial will either go in our game setup script or our Photon player script. So let's go ahead and open those scripts in Visual Studios. Now the first thing that we want to do within our game setup script is create a new variable, and this will just be a public variable. It'll be of type int, and I'm going to call it next players team. So we're going to use this variable to hold the value of which team we want the next player to be assigned to. The next thing that we need to do is create another set of spawn points that we can use for our second team. So I'm actually going to copy our spawn points variable. I'm then going to rename it to something like spawn points team one. And then we can paste the another spawn points variable below this one. And I'm going to rename this one to spawn points team two. Now there's one more thing that we need to do within our game setup script. And that is we need to create a public function that will alternate the value of our next player's team variable. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to type public void and this will be called update team. Inside this function all we have to do is first check to see if the value of our next player's team is equal to 1 and if it's equal to 1 then we need to change it to a new value like 2. So I'm going to say next player's team equals 2. We then want to create an else statement, which will check to see if next player's team does not equal one. And if it does not equal one, then we want to set it to equal one. So I'm going to type next player's team equals one. Now let's go ahead and save the script and go over to our photon player script. Within here, you can see that we're now receiving some errors. And that's because we've changed the name of our spawn point variable within the game setup script but we're going to fix all of that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change our photon view so that it is public instead of private. And the reason why I want to do this is because I was running into a null reference exception error where I was trying to access our photon view before it was initialized in our start function. It was kind of weird. And one way to fix this is to make it public and that way you can set it within the inspector and you don't have to worry about it being null at the beginning of your game. And so this is just a quick fix. You could probably also just move this line where you're getting the component of photon view into an awake function or an on enable function. The next thing that I want to do is create a new variable which will be of type int and this will be to hold the value of which team our player belongs to. So I'm going to type public then this is going to be an int and I'm going to call it my team. So now that we have these variables set up, we can start programming our team oriented spawning. And we already have some of the code that we need, which just needs to be modified. This is the spawning script that we have from our other photon playlist. And so if you haven't done that, just a reminder, go back and watch those videos. Now, before we spawn our avatar into the scene using this line of code here, we need to figure out which team we belong to. And we're going to do this using RPC functions. And so down at the bottom, we're going to create a new RPC function. So I'm going to use square brackets. I'm going to type PUN RPC. And then after this, I'm going to type void and then RPC underscore. And this is going to be our get team function. 
Now this RPC function is going to be a little bit different than the previous RPC functions that we've written. This RPC is only going to be sent to the master client. And so keep in mind that all the code that we put within this function will only ever be executed on the master client. And so the first thing that I'm going to do with inside this function is set the value of this player's team on the master client. And so I'm going to type my team equals, and I'm going to get the game setup script. So game setup.gs, and then I'm going to get the next player's team. We then want to alternate the next player's team value on the master client. And to do this, all we have to type is game setup.gs.update team, which is a function. So now that this player knows which team they belong to on the master client, we can then broadcast that value out to all the other clients. And to do this, we need another RPC function. So outside this function, I'm going to type square brackets, P-U-N, RPC, and then void. And we're going to call this function RPC underscore sent team. We also want to create a parameter for this function. And so in the parentheses, I'm going to type int, and we can call this which team. Within inside this function, we can then set the my team variable to equal which team. Now that we have this RPC function created, we can now call it within our other RPC function. So at the bottom of our RPC get team function, I'm going to type pv.rpc and then in parentheses and quotes, I'm going to pass the RPC sent team name. We then need to specify who this RPC function is being sent to. So I'm going to type RPC target dot other buffered. And finally, we need to pass in the parameter, which is going to be just my team. Now let's call our RPC get team function within the start function, but we only want to call this function if this player belongs to us. And so after our PV equals get component photon view line, I'm going to add a space and we're going to first check to see if PV dot is mine is true. And if it is, then we can call our PV dot RPC and in parentheses and quotes, we're going to pass in RPC get team. We then want to specify who this RPC is being sent to, which is our RPC target dot master client. And we're not passing in any parameters, so we don't have to worry about that. Now let's just real quick run through the process of these RPC functions so that you can better understand what's happening. First off, we're checking to see if this object belongs to the local player. If it belongs to the local player, we then send an RPC function to the master client, but not just to the master client. We're actually sending it to this object on the master client. And so when that object receives this RPC function, it then executes the code within that function. And so the first thing that it will do is it will set the my team variable equal to the value of the next player's team variable in the game setup script. Then on the master client, we update the value of the next player's team using the update team function. Once we've done that, we then send an RPC function back to all the other clients from the master client, and we pass in the my team variable as a parameter. Once the other clients receive that RPC function, it then sets the my team variable equal to the value that was passed across the network. Now in the past, we've kind of just used the local player to send RPC functions to everyone which is fine if the local player is the one with the value that needs to be synchronized. But in this scenario, it's only the master client that knows who's being assigned to which team. And so it kind of starts at the local player, but the local player only sends an RPC to the master client. And then the master client assigns a team to that player and then synchronizes it out from there, from the master client, sends the RPC out to everyone with that value. And so that's the basic process of what's happening with these two RPC functions. So now let's start spawning the players into the scene based on which team they've been assigned to. To do this, I'm first going to select everything in our start function after 
what we've added in this lesson. And I'm going to cut it from that function and paste it in our update function. I'm then going to add an if statement around this code, which is going to be if my team equals one. So if we belong to team one, then we want to do what's inside this, but we need to update the spawn point variable. So we're going to say spawn point team one, and I'm going to copy that variable and paste it wherever it's giving me an error. And so if we belong to team one, then we're only using our team one spawn points. I'm then going to copy everything in our update function and I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to change the value from one to two. And I'm going to change our spawn point to be spawn point team two. I'm then going to copy that and replace anything that says spawn point team one. And if I wanted to, just to be safe, I could change this from if my team equals two to just be an else statement. So now we have some code that will instantiate an avatar into the scene based on which team our player belongs to. But now we have a new problem, and that is that we're going to be overrun by avatars because this is the update function. And so we need to create some conditions around this code to make sure that it only executes when we want it to execute. The first condition that we can use is whether or not the my avatar variable is null. If our my avatar variable is null, it means that we haven't yet spawned an avatar into the scene. And so I'm going to type a new if statement up at the top of our update, and this is going to check to see if my avatar equals null. This condition prevents us from executing this code after we've instantiated an avatar into the scene. Now we just need to make sure that we don't execute this code too early. And what I mean by too early is before we find out which team our player belongs to. And to do this, we can add an AND condition to this IF statement and check to see if my team does not equal zero. This makes it so that while the my team variable equals zero, we do not execute this code. But as soon as the my team variable has been set to something like one or two, we can then execute this code. And so the last thing that I need to do is put curly braces around the code that I want to be inside this if statement. And so everything that we've added to our update function. Now I'm just going to save this script and make sure that I save all my scripts. And then I'm going to go back to Unity. Once in Unity, we can go to our Photon Network player prefab. And I'm going to drag our Photon view into this variable. I'm then going to go over to our multiplayer scene, and within our multiplayer scene, I'm going to make a duplicate of our spawn points, and I'm going to move them to a new location. And so these two spawn points will be for team one, and these two spawn points will be for team two. Now I'm going to select the game setup game object, and I'm going to set the next player's team equal to one, so that we don't set our first player to team zero. And then I'm going to set the values of our spawn point arrays. So I'm going to lock our inspector. I'm then going to select the first two spawn points and drag it into the spawn point team one. I'm going to select the second two spawn points. And I'm going to drag those into spawn points team two. Now we can go ahead and build our game and see if it works. Once your project's done building, I'm going to hit play in the standalone and I'm going to hit play in the editor. I'm then going to hit battle, and it doesn't really matter which order we hit battle in. But there we can see that our first player has spawned at spawn point one, and our second player has spawned at spawn point three. And spawn point one belongs to team one, and spawn point three belongs to team two. Let's go ahead and open another standalone and see which team it assigns our player to. And here you can see that it spawned it in the other location for our team one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand our hierarchy and I'm going to select the first Photon Network player, which will be our local player on the editor. And you can see that we belong to Team 1. I'm then going to select the next one, which will be our second player. And you can see that he belongs to Team 2. And our third player belongs to Team 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect from one of our standalones. And then here you can see that we now just have two players, 
one, two, and they belong to the first team. And then I'm going to click battle again. And here you can see that it spawned our fourth player back on to team two. So it looks like everything's working. And there you go, we were able to create a team assignment feature which uses the master client to alternate which team a joining player is assigned to. And then we use that team value to instantiate the player's avatar on their team's spawn point. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it to be helpful. If you have any other ideas and suggestions on what multiplayer features you'd like to see us make, then leave them in the comments below. Also subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.